Realms of Chaos. We're playing in challenging mode. I'm ready for a challenge. If something bad happens, then we'll restart. Come here. I'm going to restart though because of that flashing bar in the top. That seems to be a DOS box bug. Good. As usual, I have played this. It's been a very long time. I probably played this in 1995 when it was released, or shortly after. to the keyboard keys. Oops. So we've got a side-scrolling platformer affair. The twist here is there's two heroes and we can change between them at any time. no score so I've, I really have no reason to be going back to kill enemies that pass me. I think the gems are used to buy items. Level cleared. Okay, so there was a secret that we missed. Maybe we'll go back and try to find it. And maybe we should care about secrets. Maybe not. I'm not sure. Oh, an auto scroller. Okay. I remember this now. Check out the obligatory sharer help menu. So we can save and load at any time. The tale of Endric and Alandra. This is the duo that we're playing as. So we're going to save the land from bad stuff. We mastered magic and swordplay and became mercenaries.
So there's an evil, evil shadow ruining our world, and we're going to find it and destroy it. So this is Indric. Turned on by chocolate. Good to know. Stronger, less agile than his sister. And Elandra. Wait unknown, she won't tell us. Uses magic. Okay, so mana gems, uh, statues have items, mana gems, we, we can buy stuff. Whatever, good. I just forgot to turn the blood back on, so I'm going to do that. I want to see the realistic 90s graphic violence. And let's get back to it. Okay. Again. So it's useful to be able to switch between the characters at any time, because sometimes you want to use the sword, sometimes you would like the magic fireballs. And I think I needed Alondra to be able to jump onto that platform. fire down as Alondra, so that's also pretty appealing. We can fire in any direction, actually. Four, four directions. Got his name, we need to know. Endric, playing as Endric. And that's something we do when we have to. Because he responds pretty slowly. He swings the sword pretty slowly, so in this kind of hectic platforming environment, that's a disadvantage. But he has more health here. Realms of Chaos seems fairly forgiving with deaths so far. You die, you go back to the beginning of the level you were at. <laughs> so 
so you get used to jumping with one of them and then you jump with the other one and you can go farther or not as far so you gotta remember who you're playing as and we're gonna go back and we're gonna start on the normal difficulty I was afraid it was going to be too easy, but it's not. For me, anyway. Now, we left behind a secret last time. So I'll see if we can find it this time. Looks like you get twice as much health on normal difficulty as you do on challenge difficulty. So this looks like it should be a secret. Ah, oh, okay. That's it. Well, and that was a secret when I jumped and that statue just fell from the sky. Or it was a statue secret anyway, I don't know if it was an official secret. So you kind of want to look at the terrain upcoming to decide whether you want to be Endrick or is it Alondra? Hendrick and Alondra, yeah. Sorry, I gotta respect the lore. Yeah, so I rode up to the top, and then this statue came out and gave us a ring, which is, should be good for something. 
That's kind of like ghouls and ghosts sort of thing where you have to be in a certain position to trigger where the chests come out. Okay, so we got one secret and two out of three statues that time. That is so far the most dangerous enemy in the game. Because it can knock you off your platform into a spike pit. be nice to be able to slash up as Indrik. No, we can't do that. So you can kind of see him gravitating toward Endrick most of the time since he has more health. And more combat strength, but that's really just to keep Alondra alive. Weapons power up. Okay, so that costs us 50 gems and... I assume it makes our... I think it gave us better range, actually, so that's nice. Yeah, more range for the sword. And, yep, a bigger fireball, so maybe that's more power. Thank you. 
That was an invisible platform, I think, that we just landed on. And here's a secret, a secret wall that we can walk into. Nice. These secret walls are kind of how, like, Donkey Kong Country did it. I wonder if they were inspired. So I'm on this invisible platform here. Don't necessarily any, see anything to do from there, but... Another invisible platform right there. Good way to use invisible platforms. Usually platforms start breaking away and working against you. I like platforms that work for you. Nice, I like this weapons upgrade. jump off this thing. What? <laughs> that had to be it, right? We jump off that. These big animals running quickly across the ground, you really gotta, gotta be on point with the sword. You're gonna miss them. 
That was it. I just missed it the first time. duck under them. Yes. Getting tougher here already. Definitely want to find any weapons power ups that are around here. get up there.
Okay, we I should have tried it before, but we can fire weapons from the ropes. That's good. Should have dropped on that platform for the statue. Nice, recovered it. So that was our magic shield. Okay, one of three secrets. You can crouch and crawl at the same time like this. That's one way to find secrets. Oops. Let's try this first. Okay, yeah. Now, 
how do we get off the rope onto that area? Max health increased. All right, nice. So that's what the score is useful for. That's the reason for killing all the enemies and grabbing all these rings and stuff. That was kind of a maze. <laughs> Whoops. You gotta grab the rope, guy. Come on. Work with me. So, start it back at the beginning. Sorry, Indrik. I do accept my share of the responsibility for impaling you. a maze situation here. I'm not sure where to go to clear everything. Oops.
got some jitter in the gameplay here, and that is that is my problem. Um, I had to turn DOSBox cycles up much higher than normal to make this run smoothly, and then that caused problems for the stream. Where the recording slowed everything down. So I turned it down, and we're not quite at the frame rate where things would be really, really smooth. So lesson learned, and I may need to try to fix my GPU. I have a GeForce card, but it stopped working a couple of years ago. It started giving me problems, so I took it out, and there's just the the embedded Intel GPU that's part of the CPU right now. That's what we're using. Try not to impale anyone. There we go. I really want to go over there on the left. Whoops. <laughs> uh. We do have kind of a slippery rope situation here. Still totally my fault, but the rope is a little, a little slippery, a little greasy. secret wall. over there I have to go over there no <laughs> I shouldn't have done it okay I'm just gonna get I'm gonna get there I'm not gonna go over there again I'm just gonna go past it I'm going to accept that I'm not good enough to get over there right now
Realms of Chaos is interesting. This would have been dated technically when it was released. Donkey Kong Country had already been released. Duke Nukem 3D would be... This was released in 1995 and Duke 3D would have been released in early 96, pretty shortly after this one. The PS1 would have been released right around the time that Realms of Chaos is released. The consoles, the fourth gen consoles, Let's see if we can make this jump this time. Okay. Let's see if we can not fall on the spikes. Alright. So the, the fourth gen consoles had already been doing platforming, platforming games that were... Yeah, as good as better as good or better than Realms of Chaos and this doesn't bring any innovations really that those that those platforms haven't seen already. But at the same time Realms of Chaos does does things right, I think. It knows what it is and it executes on that pretty well. How about a weapons upgrade though? Schuler, the designer of this game, is known for... Oh, is this a secret? Very nice. seem to keep coming. Keith Schuler is known for Haganitsu earlier. And from what I remember that was a very good game. I think Paganitsu is a puzzle game, kind of a puzzle action game. And Paganitsu is also a shareware game, I believe. We will probably play it on this stream, so I remembered it was good. This is a boss. 
my. It's not going to work to just get up there and bludgeon. We need a better strategy. Guess we'll save. This could be a challenge. So he jumps and then stabs and then rushes. Looks like a few different patterns to work out. kind of crouch down and miss the stab. Sometimes crouch and miss the step. Hmm. Okay, so you can definitely throw magic and interrupt the knife, th knife throw. Okay, so you can interrupt the knife throw, then he'll jump. Then you can run under, start firing again, but you don't want to get caught in this rush. 
Making some progress. Now what can we do with Endric? slash on this side but we can slash on the right side but not on the left side and we'll do pretty well if we slash on the right side Explode, explode. Who's that in the background? How does this person work into the story? And that was Lord Ross. Lord Ross. The person in the throne room was the Mrialan king. Good, so we've awakened the king from his trance, from his enchantment by the evil jewel, and now we've gone to the realm of goblins. And I will be right back. I'm going to stretch. Stretch my legs for just a second. Continue. You fall in the water, you die. No swimming. Thank <laughs> you. 
Butterfly is the new most dangerous enemy in the game. It's not the bat anymore. So we're, we're back down to our original weapons and our original three bars of health. So that's kind of weak sauce. I like the bigger sword. Bigger sword, bigger fireballs. Okay, so this is where that butterfly... That's a titsy fly. Could be a bot fly. I don't know. This. This does seem like it could be a bot fly situation. Easy level one. I think you always get knocked back based on the direction you're facing, which is kind of weird. Let's try it. Yeah, so that doesn't make any sense, but that's how it goes. You get knocked backwards however you're facing backwards. Fighting the boss at the end of the last episode gives a reason to save up the gems, since Alondra uses them as ammunition. The boss used a lot of ammunition to kill. Okay, so the boss already. He 
easy boss though. <laughs> Sick death animation though. I like that. <clears throat> okay. Level three, the mushroom forest. So hard to slash in time to catch those wolves. guys just remind me a little bit of the Enderman in Minecraft, I don't know why. Whoops. Right off the edge. Slipped right off. I mean, it's business, he just, man, just runs up and decks you in the face. first major gripe about this game, I think, is these wolves and tigers and other fast-moving enemies that come, they're just real hard to see and slash your sword fast enough to hit them. I don't know, maybe not major, but it's a gripe. It's, it's a pain. I guess that's actually one of my personal platformer gripes. It's when a platformer doesn't give you enough time to react and you basically have to know the enemy's there to react to it. I don't know, maybe it's actually not that bad and I'm just not paying close enough attention. I'm just playing through casually. See, tough dude right there. All right. I want that statue. And I do want to get as many of the enemies as possible because that's what gets you health upgrades. Part of it anyway. 
All right, zero of one secrets. Missed a secret wall somewhere. Well, I didn't see the spikes. Got to be careful of where I'm looking. Cannot jump down there. almost safe to drop down there. OK, 
Okay, so how do I get down there for that statue? boxes for the jump detection. I guess not. I guess you, you just gotta be real precise with it. Oh, and we we did a health upgrade. Neat. Blind spike that All right. I think the difficulty is ramped up in this second episode. It feels like it. Back in business. I feel like the sound effects really overshadow the music in this game. That surprises me a little bit. Bobby Prince is the musician composer for this soundtrack and usually puts music up front. makes it a big part of the action. But I actually forgot that this game even had music. I, I've been listening to the sound effects, but haven't even heard the music in the background. It's there, but it's soft. Yeah. 
Come on. <laughs> the bat reclaims its place as the most dangerous enemy in the game. So those guys that punch you, you can hit them and then walk away. And then they miss you. So yeah, they're they're definitely trying to oops, definitely trying to increase the challenge here in episode two. They've placed enemies to knock you back into the spikes. Back in business. Got our health power up again. Four bars of health. We're in good shape. As long as we can avoid getting not backed into spikes. Probably really a good policy. Whoa, I was almost. I was not paying attention, I almost just walked into the spike pit. And these spikes, like all spikes, for some reason you just walk into the side and that's the same as impaling yourself on them. I wonder if I'll ever play a game where they get it so that you don't die when you walk into the edge of the spike like you shouldn't. I'm sure there are some. Wasn't Sonic like that? Couldn't you push against the side of the spikes and not die in Sonic? going to walk off that because that could be a spike pit. Probably is. No! Ah, I noticed it just a second too late.
Yeah. Some contrast in the color between the spikes and the mushroom trees would be nice. I know, it's on me. I gotta I gotta pay attention. Gotta pay attention and not do blind jumps everywhere. But still. I'll still call out the cheap tricks when I see them. Get those, I don't want to find a spike pit for doing it. I guess, guess I didn't. Got away with it. How do we get down there? Let's finish up this stage. Spike pit. This is where we came from. So we've got a bit of a puzzle section here. I don't know how to get down there. Spikes.
spikes. Okay, so it looks like we can get around this way. Nice. Good, good, good. And I'm glad to stock up on jewels too. Gems. See, that man impaled himself on the spikes. That's what I like to see. If I'm going to do it, they should make the same mistake once in a while. <laughs> okay, so I have to jump over that spike into that hole. There we go. <laughs> Enough for the cruel tricks, man. It's alright. That was pretty challenging. Let's, let's see what this next stage is like. Interesting. Kind of a Super Mario Brothers thing here. That was kind of a secret area that that I did not figure out how to get to, huh?
That's a big boy. Of course. What else would happen? Back in business. So hopefully that wasn't a weapons upgrade right there. So this looped around so we can actually take another shot at that. Come on. Risky, I know, but I gotta see what's in the statues. Could be a nice weapon upgrade.
How do we get up there? So I think that there was a there was some stuff up here that I guess I want to try to get because it seems like it seems like where the big guy was just now is the way forward. No, and that's why you don't do that. It's kind of a funny thing that completionism, the temptation to see everything in the level and pick up all the items and stuff like that. That gets me killed in games all the time. Whereas if I could, if I were just the person that didn't care and just went from point A to point B as fast as possible. I'd be better. But nope, I gotta see what's in the statue up there. I know it's just a ring or something or a necklace. Gotta see what it is. But on the other hand, if you're like that, then you get replay value out of games that you wouldn't otherwise, so it's not all bad. Thank you for the new follow. I appreciate that. destroy the fireballs with the sword too and that is a much easier way to get rid of this. It looks like you can go up there. I can't figure out how. Possible hidden platform or maybe you go up there in a different way and then you come from there. I don't know. to do it before.
See? Okay, I gotta focus on health management right now. Need a health potion. I'm just going the other way. I've seen the statues enough times, man. I know there's nothing I care about inside them. I think that's it for the night. Alright, I'm gonna quit for now. I was getting kind of bored and then uh, kind of picked up the challenge again and the made a point of episode 2 here, so I don't know, maybe we'll come back to Realms of Chaos. I don't have a whole lot to say about it, it's done pretty well. Not innovative really for the time, but what they do, they do well and it's fun, it's kind of interesting, so I think it's worth a playthrough. Maybe we'll do some more at some point. Alrighty, thanks for watching. See you next time.